Hello, people. I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Kristen Stephenson Pino and Achara Kirk. Yo. We're looking at the video called What is Sikhism? Yay! So I am pronouncing it Sikhism. Achara pronounces it Sikhism. Sikhism. So this is from Cogito or Cogito, the YouTube channel. If you haven't already, uh, maybe, maybe check their channel out. They've got mm -hmm. some. Um, they have some cute, cute merch. Merch is the word I was looking for. I was going to say props. I'm like, why am I saying props? <laughs> Merch. They have cute merch. If you like the video we watch, then make sure to head over to the original. There's a link in the description below. Give them an upvote, and uh, by clicking on that link, you're you're helping them out because you're giving the original video a view. This video is made possible thanks to Audible. Visit audible.com/cogito or text cogito to 500-500 to start your 30-day free trial. This is the Harry Mandir, the world's largest free kitchen. It wow. serves free vegetarian food to about 100,000 people every day. Oh. It's also the holiest site in Sikhism, the fifth largest and youngest of the world religions. A religion oh. that preaches about love, peace, and the equality of humankind, but also asks its followers to carry swords. Yeah. So who are the Sikhs? What do they believe? And why does everyone confuse them for Muslims? Well, let's find out. <laughs> I like his little, um, Avatar. Yeah, it's cute. Sikhism originated in the Punjab area of India and Pakistan 500 years ago. The Punjab, oh, okay. the land of five rivers, is one of the most historically and culturally dense areas on earth. This was the home of one of the world's earliest civilizations, the Indus Valley Civilization. Mm -hmm. Persians, Greeks, Central Asians, Mughals, the British and others have all invaded here. I meant, I meant Mughals. Mughal, Mughals invaded here. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Jainism, and a handful of other faiths have all left their mark on the region. The diverse culture of the Punjab has heavily influenced the Sikhs. Today, there are about 25 million Sikhs. They make up about 2% of India's population, but about 60% of the Punjabs. The Sikh diaspora is spread out across the world, with concentrations in the UK, Canada, the US, East Africa, Australia, and Malaysia. Sikhs, oh. interestingly enough, make up about 1.5% of Canada's population, which is wow. second only to India. The word Sikh means learner. Sikhs call their religion Sikhi, Gur Sikhi, and Gurmat. You can't really understand the Sikhs without understanding their relationship with gurus. The word guru means a teacher or spiritual guide. The guru teaches and the Sikh learns. The Sikhs follow the teachings of 10 succeeding gurus that have shaped Sikhism. The first and most important guru is Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhism. Born in 1469 CE near what is today Lahore, Pakistan. Nanak was seen as special even as a child. As a baby, he was said to have had the laugh of an adult man. Here comes the bird. <laughs> as a teenager, he preferred to listen to Hindu saints and Sufi Muslim <laughs> preachers temples. rather than his own parents. As an adult, Nanak would settle in Sultanpur, where he worked for the government. The actions of his fellow government officials and the rich and powerful disgusted him as they exploited ordinary working people. And he hated the caste divisions that he saw all around him. One day, while bathing in a river near Sultanpur, Nanak had a miraculous experience. He was swept up into God's court where God spoke to him. Nanak reappeared three days later, declaring, There is no Hindu and there is no Muslim. There was only God. This was a message inspired by his experience with God. One that spoke in favor of the equality of humankind and against caste, ethnic and religious divisions. Nanak would later say, accept all humans as your equals and let them be your only sect. Nine human gurus followed Nanak, all preaching the same message of one God and the equality of humankind. Two fundamental events that shaped Sikh history was the martyrdom of two gurus. The first was the fifth guru, Guru Arjan, who was roasted alive by the Mughal emperor Jahangir. The next martyr would be the ninth guru, Guru Teg Bahadur. He was beheaded by the Mughals while attempting to defend the religious rights of Hindus. His son, Guru Gobind Rai, the tenth and final human guru, started a new Sikh community called the Khalsa and ended the line of human gurus by making the Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh holy book, the last living guru. We'll take a closer look at both of these in a bit. So with that brief history out of the way, let's take a look at the core beliefs of Sikhism. 1. One God 
The Sikh holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib's opening sentence is just two words, Ik Ankar. There is only one God. Nanak made sure it was clear that the focus was on one. Ik doesn't just mean one, it is literally the numeral one. One God is by far the most important belief in Sikhism. This may not be the kind of God you're used to though. Sikhs believe in a formless, genderless, universal God oh. beyond description. This God is all of reality and is within everything. They believe no idol or image could ever represent this being, so they use the sacred symbol of Ik Ankar to represent it instead. Mm. Many Sikhs refer to this one God by the name Wei Guru, Wondrous Lord. Guru Nanak and his followers constantly emphasized that this one could be understood in many different ways. Mm. No ah. religion had a monopoly on the truth. Nanak's one could be known as Vishnu, Allah, the Tao, Yahweh, the algorithm, or any other name or belief. Mm. There was no need to fight mm. over whose God was the true God, as they were all the same one. Oh my God. Recognize all mankind, mm. whether Muslim or Hindu, as one. The same God is the creator and nourisher of all. Recognize no distinctions among them. The temple and the mosque are the same, so are Hindu worship and Muslim prayer. Human beings are all one. Guru Gobind Singh. The lack of a gender for this one God means that there is no difference between men and women in Sikhism. Sikhism was among the first major world religions to make the radical suggestion that maybe, just maybe, women are people too. Women in Sikhism have fought battles, <laughs> led religious services, and even acted as some of the longest reigning leaders of the entire community. Wow. Sikhism isn't based on doing things to get into some heaven or hell. Hell is just life on earth, which your soul is constantly reborn into after you die, which is a uh, pretty dark. You see, Sikhs believe in reincarnation and karma, similar to Buddhists, Hindus and Jains. But Sikhs believe that karma is modified by God. As in, karma might decide what life you're born into, but God makes sure that anyone can become a good person in their lifetime if they try. The goal of Sikh life is to break free from the cycle of rebirth by merging your soul back into God's soul. One does this by realizing that you are already a part of God. You just need to let go of your ego. When your soul remerges back into God's, this is called Mukti, which is similar to Hinduism's Moksha and means liberation. When you remerge, your soul is released from the cycle of rebirth and death and becomes infinite, timeless, and blissful. This is the closest thing Sikhs have to heaven. 2. Maya Sikhs believe that God is and created reality. But we forget this because humans are distracted by illusion or Maya, which is anything that takes your mind off God. That's Maya so keeps people trapped in the cycle of rebirth and death. Maya in saw time that means Maya illusion. built a wall between people and God. The wall of Maya is filled with the five thieves. Lust, anger, greed, attachment, and pride. It is the duty of all six to avoid these thieves. The five thieves are caused by how my, literally I myself. How my makes people say, I am this, I am that, and it separates you from others, which blocks you from realizing your oneness with God. This ego causes people to live only for themselves, to spew negativity and to crave power and wealth. Such a person is called Munmuk, facing towards desires. Guru Nanak saw the world's problems as the negative effects of ego. Hindu versus Muslim, Israeli versus Palestinian, sitting down wipers versus standing up wipers. All of these conflicts are caused by ego <laughs> and maya. The Guru Granth Sahib said it is not religion or race, but it is wealth that divides brothers. But Guru Nanak thought that there was an other direction people could face. By being a spiritual person, practicing compassion, truth, contentment, humility, and love, and meditating on God, you could instead become Gurmukh facing towards the Guru. How does one become Gurmukh and egoless? Well, Sikhism offers a path to follow that can help, called the Three Pillars. Three. Three Pillars. The Three Pillars are 1. Nam Japo, which is meditation on God and the reciting and chanting of God's name, Wei Guru. This is normally done in the morning and before bed. 
This isn't supposed to just be some mindless ritual either. Sikhs are supposed to genuinely reflect on the qualities of God as they do this. 2. Kirat Karni Working hard and making an honest living Guru Nanak said, Only he who earns his living by the sweat of his brow and shares his earnings with others has discovered the path of righteousness. 3. Wand Chakna this is sharing the fruits of your labor with others, providing free food and donating to the community. The Sikh tradition of a communal meal or lunger at the Gurdwaras is a part of Wand Chakna. The lunger or communal free kitchen inside of a Sikh Gurdwara, which is their equivalent of a mosque or church, is open to all who visit, regardless of caste, faith or gender. These serve vegetarian food to all, not because Sikhs have to be vegetarian, but simply because that means all people of all diets can partake. So if you want to taste typical Punjabi food, just go visit a Gurdwara. In Guru Nanak's time, cool. the idea of different castes sitting together on the floor and eating side by side was a revolutionary act. Famously, the Mughal Emperor Akbar visited Guru Arjan and the Guru would not meet with him until he partook in a lunger which the emperor did, sitting side by side with peasants. Guru Nanak claimed an enlightened person are those who view everyone equally, like the heir touching the king and beggar alike. Another vital part of Sikhism that isn't one of the three pillars is Seva, which is selfless service. Through service to their community, Sikhs can become more humble and overcome their ego. Seva can include cleaning up the Gurdwara, preparing food or cleaning dishes in the lunger, or it can include volunteering, building things for your community, or subscribing and ringing the notification bell on educational YouTube channels. Through remembering God's name, honest work and sharing, along with selfless service and avoiding the five thieves, a person can rid themselves of egoism and be released from the cycle of rebirth and death. 4. The Khalsa Guru Gobind Rai was the son of the ninth Guru, Teg Bahadur, who was beheaded by the Mughals and his body was abandoned by his Sikh entourage. They fled easily because no one could recognize them. So Guru Gobind decided to give Sikhs a distinct look from now on so that they would always be compelled to uphold Sikh values. So in 1699, Guru Gobind brought his Sikhs together at Anandapur. After their morning prayer, he stood in front of a huge crowd and demanded a human sacrifice. The shocked crowd was silent for a while before one Sikh rose up and entered the Guru's tent. The Guru followed him in. And then the Guru comes out with blood on his sword. He demands another sacrifice. Another Sikh offers himself and enters the tent. Again, only the Guru comes back out of the tent, bloody sword in hand. Again, another sacrifice. And again, and finally, after the fifth sacrifice, the Guru re-emerges with the five six, all wearing saffron coloured robes. The Guru declares that these oh, wow. are the Panj Pyareng, the five beloved ones. They would form the centre of a new Sikh community called the Khalsa. He offered them Amrit, a bowl of sweet water. And all five who belonged to different caste groups drank the Amrit from the same bowl, which would have been a huge deal back then. Mm. This signified they had joined a new casteless family, the Khalsa. Each of these volunteers had to leave behind their old surnames or caste names and adopt the same surname, Singh, which comes from the Sanskrit word Simba, ah. meaning lion. I know, right? It has, it has no relation to the Bantu word Simba, which also means lion. It's just, it's just a weird coincidence, which is great. <laughs> the Guru then begged the five beloved ones to let him join their Khalsa. They offered him the Amrit and the Guru became Guru Gobind Singh. Women were admitted to the Khalsa the same way as men. After drinking the Amrit, they received the surname Kaur, meaning princess. The Khalsa gave the Sikhs a new unified identity, tied together as one family with one name, without caste, with the goal of defending the weak and promoting justice. Today, many Sikhs still undergo the Amrit ceremony and take the surnames Singh and Kaur. The Khalsa were also given new rules to follow, which included the wearing of the Panj Kakar, or the 5Ks. The first was Kes, which is uncut hair to represent discipline. The second was a Karga, a small comb in the hair. The third was a Kirpan, a sword to uphold justice and protect the weak, which is nowadays usually a small sword. It is importantly not an offensive weapon and the Sikh code of conduct claims it can only be used to destroy tyrants and oppressors. It must not be used for anything else. The fourth is Kakahira, kind of loose fitting boxer shorts to represent sexual restraint. And the fifth is Kara, a steel bracelet, its circular shape represents the infinity of God. Interestingly, the turban is not one of the five Ks. 
Instead, it's worn to cover the Sikh's long, uncut hair, the kes. Turbans have become essential to Sikh identity and hold very special significance to them. Chances are, if you see someone wearing a turban, the vast majority of the time, that person will be a Sikh, not a Muslim. 5. The Guru Granth Sahib The Guru Granth Sahib is the holy book of the Sikhs. It contains the teachings of the Gurus and acts as a spiritual guide for Sikhs around the world. It is probably one of the only holy books that contains not only the writings of the religion's founders written by themselves rather than after their death, but also the writing of people from other religions. The writings of Muslims and Hindus can be found throughout, along with references to Judaism, Buddhism and Christianity. Before his death in 1708, the 10th Guru, Guru Gobind Singh, ended the line of human human gurus by bestowing guruship on the Adi Granth, turning it into the Guru Granth Sahib, making it similar to both the Bible and Quran and the living prophet at the same time. To break down the name, the word guru means guru, uh, Granth means book and Sahib means lord. Since that moment, the Guru Granth Sahib has been revered as the current living guru. It is treated with extreme respect and care. Oddly enough, the Granth is not only read, but sung. It's made up of thousands of hymns. Six don't have mass or service, but a kirtan, meaning communal singing. Normally, these are set to classical Indian music. Six, the Gurdwara. Six gather at Gurdwaras, a word meaning doorway to the Guru. A Gurdwara is only a Gurdwara because it has a copy of the Guru Granth Sahib in it. Men and women of all castes and social standing gather there to join in prayer, singing and eating. This is where you'll find the Lunger. Anyone can visit a Gurdwara and partake in the service and meal. You only need to follow basic etiquette. Cover your head, remove your shoes, wash your hands as you enter, and do your best not to bring any drugs or tobacco inside. The most important Gurdwara in the world is the Hari Mandir or Golden Temple in Amritsar, India. In 1604, Guru Arjan completed work on the Golden Temple and had the Guru Granth Sahib installed inside it. As a gesture of religious tolerance, Guru Arjan invited the Muslim Mian Mir to lay the foundation stone of the Golden Temple. The temple has four doors opening on all four sides to show the openness to all cultures and peoples. But on the inside, only one door leads to the inner sanctum, indicating that all paths and beliefs eventually lead to the one God. The Golden Temple is the most visited place in the world with around 6 million visitors each year. The Lunger at the Golden Temple serves a free meal to about 100,000 people each day, making it the world's largest free serving kitchen, all run and staffed by volunteers. And the waiting list to volunteer in the Golden Temple has hundreds of thousands of names on it. The people on that list will be waiting for a long time. A good way for them to pass the time productively will be to listen to audiobooks over on Audible. That was super interesting. That was very informative. Mm -hmm. I learned yeah. a lot. Cause like I always thought that the religion, like from what I've seen in the movies and, and my friends who are sick. Okay, sorry, I've been saying it wrong this whole time. So they can pronounce it either way. Yeah. It's 50-50, they can go sick or sick. It's up yeah, to you. so from the people that I know who are sick, like they've all always been really awesome people and just very welcoming and open and just lovely. I don't know, it just makes sense to me because a lot of the stuff I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. Right, when he broke it down, I'm like, that actually sounds like an incredibly sensible religion. Yeah. I mean, it's, it sounds like something that I would actually be more open to exploring because when people ask me what I identify as, I usually say agnostic. I don't put a gender, I don't put a form, I don't put any sort of parameters on God. I just go, I believe in God, but I don't know what that Means. Means, exactly. Yeah. I, don't, I don't have a parameter for that. And they said it right at the top, like, there is no shape or form, like, they don't define God. I'm like, well, that's basically how I feel. I liked a lot of what they had to say. I don't know that I would actually, like, go full-blown and, like, participate in the religion, but I'd like to learn more about it. This is obviously just the, what do you call it? Uh, it's cursory understanding. Yeah, surface. well, the... Uh, yeah, it's very surface, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't go very deep, but it's still thorough for being a 
16-minute video. I always thought this was actually really thorough and very informative about the different properties and the different uh, parts of Sikhism. Like, it's educational. The animation helps a lot. The stock photo, stock footage that he paid for really made it work. The little humor, humorous bits as well, like the muggle thing. Mm. Right. And like other little jokes. It just kind of was really great at keeping you engaged because yeah. it can be a little dry sometimes, mm -hmm. but like by adding cartoons and, and like little jokes every now and then, it just keeps you just really focused on what is being said. Right. Like it makes you pay attention. I actually say the same thing when everybody, I, just, I don't know, I'm like listening and I was like, I actually explain that just like that with the God thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't believe there's multiple gods. I believe at the end of the day, it's all the same God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever you believe in. I thought it was neat that they decided to not like have an actual image of God but just a symbol. You know, like in Christianity, we have like the endless depictions and interpretations of what Jesus looked like. That's just Christianity. You know, the same thing happens with a lot of religions. To make the deliberate choice to not have an actual image of God, I think is actually a bold move. You are collectively agreeing in uh, upon this idea and all you have to represent this idea is a symbol. That's a big ask because people inherently want we're visual, yeah. Yeah. visual creatures, right? We're visual people. Like we need something to hook onto, even if we know that that's not actually how that looks. We need that to make it more tangible. And this religion saying, no, yeah. we just have a symbol. That's all you get. And I think that's actually a bold, a big ask. And but I mean, obviously when you're raising kids on that idea, it's a little bit different. These were grownups dealing with these ideas and telling other grown-ups this is what we're going to continue forward with. Yeah. And then to make the move to not even have a priest necessarily to have a guru anymore that's just this book. I feel two ways about that. I mean, who am I to like have an opinion on it? There's a, a pro and a con to it. The pro is that you don't have this altercation of the ideas. Like it's pretty clear cut what these ideas are. The Hindrance there is that it doesn't update with the times. The upside to that is you you de you then don't have like a Martin Luther come in and be like, oh no, like this is not the true religion. This is the true religion over here, and then altering it, and then you have like this splintering off of multiple. No, like this is it. It creates a unity of this belief, this philosophy, this religion, and I think that there's a beauty there. Well, I think what's also cool about the the uh, what is it called the Guru Granth. No? Well, I got it wrong. Anyway, about the book, right? It was actually written by, like, with the words of the actual people, or the Guru Granth Sahib. It was actually written by those people. And then, yeah. like, how beautiful it, is it as well that they incorporated teachings and, and writings from other religions? I mean, you think about a lot of the literature, like, take the Bible, for example. It wasn't written by Jesus. I like no. the way they picked the guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. With, yeah. The, with the five. Yeah, I like how they picked the five, yeah. where they asked for volunteers to sacrifice themselves and, and that, you know. They ended up getting a very privileged it's, position yeah. as a result. <laughs> That's a tricky one. That one's crazy. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it's the willingness to sacrifice your life it ends up, you know, elevating you to the highest status of that religion. It's very interesting. The way the Golden Temple's design, I think is dope. That's super mm -hmm. I think, dope. I think it's I really that. cool. And that actually is my favorite aspect of this whole thing. I knew about this, but it's still really neat to learn about, again, this notion that there's this place where a lot of people can come and just eat for free and there's no class. Yeah. There's no caste. It's just everyone's equal here. You all eat together. It's that simple. The fact that there's this long ass waiting list to participate in volunteering to be helpful to this place yeah. is also really neat. I'm like, wow, this is a very unified community, I think. I mean, at a cursory glance, I'm not, I don't know the ins and outs of all this stuff. At a cursory glance from the outside looking in, it really feels like this is a very solid, tight community, and I think that's really cool. Well, yeah, like mm. like I said- I like, like that they give back, they're giving back yeah. to like so many, and that's hard to do. And to have that integrated as part of your belief system, I think is so beautiful, because I think a lot of the times, religions can become very, you know, like they separate you. Oh, you can't come worship here because you don't follow my thing. I love that this is just open to everybody. Everyone. And, the, and their text has information from people from different religions. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's awesome. Unheard of. That's everything. Yeah. Uh, enjoy this thoroughly, you guys. Yeah. Thanks so much for hanging out. Make sure to head over to Kogito's channel. Give him a subscribe if you could be so kind and give the original video an upvote. Uh, it would help. Every little bit helps. And uh, subscribe here as well. Check out Kristen and Achar on the social media. Check out our other reactions, reviews, short films, vlogs, and interviews. I'm Jabby Koei. This is Kristen Stephenson Pino. And Achara Cook. Peace out.